India and Egypt share strong relationship. Uh, this time, India has invited the Egyptian President Al Sisi for its Republic Day parade celebrations as a guest. Uh, with me is the Egyptian ambassador to India to talk about this relationship and the visit of the Egyptian President. Sir, welcome to Vion. And my first question to you, an obvious question is that the Egyptian President has been invited as a chief guest. And this is for the first time that Egypt has been invited. How do you see this honor being bestowed by India towards your president and towards uh, the Egyptian people and Egypt? Well, uh, to start with, thank you very much for having me on We on uh, a channel that I greatly appreciate. So thank you for taking this initiative. And now coming to your question, let me start by saying that by the very uh, nature of the relationship between uh, Egypt and India, this is a historic relationship. Historic because we are the two oldest civilizations in the world civilizational countries. So our contacts have always been there and have always been strong and have always been very high on, on, on the international stage. But this time, it is completely different. We always say that the heyday of relations between Egypt and, and India were the 1950s and the 1960s, the, the, the period of uh, uh, President Nasser in Egypt and Prime Minister Nehru here in India. But even at the time of Nasser and Nehru, in the 1950s and 1960s, the Egyptian president ha has never had the honor of being here in, in India for a public day. So I see this as a truly historic moment in our relationship. Let's not forget that both President Sisi as well as Prime Minister Modi, they came in, the, in their places in 2014. So they came together at the same time. They share uh, the, almost the same vision and the same priority of putting their, uh, their, their countries first and trying to achieve development and trying to modernize their countries and to put them in the rightful place on the international stage. So I think what we're having here is a new opening, a new beginning, to not only to bring back the heydays of, of relations between Egypt and India, but actually to break new grounds, to, 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 to reach even higher potentials in this relationship. And therefore, uh, we are going to announce that we have a strategic, we're working towards a strategic kind of relationship between both countries. So in all respects, it is going to be a historic uh, visit, especially, as I said before, that our president has never been here on this occasion before. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so what are we looking at when it comes to deliverables from the visit uh, uh, in terms of the focus area in uh, the visit, the visit uh, that will see him engaging with the Indian Prime Minister as well as part of the bilateral conversations? As I was saying before, this is going to be a, a groundbreaking uh, visit because we, we are going to have a kind of strategic relationship. This uh, strategic relationship is built on several uh, uh, pillars. Maybe if we speak about the pillar of defense and, and security, we always have to remember that India, as the biggest country in the Indian Ocean, is very much interested in the security of the Indian Ocean. But the security of the Indian Ocean starts with the entrance to the Indian Ocean in the Red Sea. And for Egypt, on the Red Sea, the entrance to the Red Sea is the Suez Canal. So the, the, the security of the Suez Canal starts with the Indian Ocean as well. So in the, er in, in, in the area of security, it's very important for both countries to come together and discuss uh, how, how things are developing in the world around us in, in an, era, uh, an era of ever-changing uh, perspectives. So defense is going to be an important aspect of it. Also, trade and investment are going to be extremely important. As you know, uh, over the past year, our bilateral trade relations have reached uh, our bilateral trade volume has reached approximately seven billion US dollars, and we have agreed uh, we have agreed last July that we're going to work together India and Egypt to reach a level of tw uh, twelve billion US dollars. So the potentials are there because even the seven billion that we have reached last year was was uh, uh, achieved in spite of the pandemic and in spite of the disruptions in supply chain because of the Ukraine crisis. So the potentials are huge when it comes to investment. Also, investments in Egypt, Indian investments have reached. 1.5, uh, 3.5 billion uh, US dollars, but lately we have we have uh, uh, reached several deals, especially in the field of uh, renewable energy, that will bring this volume up to 20 something billion. Mm -hmm. So, so we are very much interested also in the economic aspect of this relationship. And what what we always say is that for India, Egypt should be a natural a natural partner because with this kind of geographic location bridging Asia and Europe, bringing India closer to the, to, to, to the European Union with all its markets, 
usually when we speak about India, we say that India is a huge is a huge country. By the end of this year, it's going to be the the, the most populous country in the world uh, before China. And Egypt is relatively relatively small in this respect as a market in and for itself. But let's not forget that for Indian investors who come to Egypt, they will be able to tap to tap into a market of close to 1.3 billion. Uh, uh, consumers and with this with this number I mean the consumers in the European Union in Africa in the Middle East all of which are uh, regions with which we have uh, free trade areas so for any investor investing in Egypt means that he, he has the opportunity to go duty free into the markets of 1.3 billion uh, consumers from all economic uh, uh, levels from higher income higher income countries in the north in the European Union um, um, uh, medium and lower income countries in the Middle East and in Africa so it's a golden opportunity for India as well and also let's not forget that by locating in Egypt this means that India is coming closer to all these markets mm -hmm. closer geographically because basically it, w it will cut the distance in half. And by cutting the distance in half, let's not forget that it, it, India will also be cutting in half the, the, the cost of freight, the insurance, the fuel, and, and, and time, of course, because we are living in an era in which time is extremely important for the supply chain. Mm -hmm. So Egypt is a very, a very uh, strategic geographic location for India, and I hope India is going to make use of this. So this is another pillar uh, when it comes to uh, economic opportunities. A third, uh, 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 a third area of common interest would be working together in the fields of IT, in the fields of energy, in the fields of pharmaceuticals. The fields are numerous mm -hmm. and they all have enormous potentials for both countries to work together. Mm -hmm. uh, so you mentioned about the defense relationship. We saw the Indian Defense Minister Rajnath Singh visited uh, your country last year and focus on cooperation and of course uh, uh, the, the there has been the past uh, the Indian side training the Egyptian side as well we saw the uh, exercises as well when it comes to the Indian forces and the Egyptian forces so what kind of defense cooperation are we looking at between the two countries? Uh, what we are looking at here is the possibility of extending the areas, the areas of defense cooperation in all uh, fields, not only in maritime exercises, but also on, on uh, in other areas, in air defense, in uh, land combat. And uh, later this month, we will have the first ever uh, exercises between Egypt and India for special forces. So the areas are enormous. The idea of a joint production of military equipment is also there. It's going to be discussed. And I I think this was the focus of the visit of His Excellency the Minister of Defense, uh, Minister Rajnath Singh, to Cairo in September uh, last year. So the areas are huge. Uh, definitely this year we're going to discuss many of these uh, potentials, especially that we're going to have the Joint Military Working Group sometime later this year. Mm -hmm. uh, is Egypt interested in India's stages uh, uh, fighter jet? I think this is something that I will leave up to the minister to, to, to discuss, for the Air Force to discuss and to see what they can do about that. But definitely, we are ke keeping a very close eye on the advancement that, that India is achieving in its defense uh, industries, especially when it comes to fighter planes, when it comes to, uh, to uh, uh, missiles, when it comes to uh, AEDs. There are many things in, in which India has, has proven to be a very successful country. Mm -hmm. Agriculture has been another key pillar of this relationship. Last year, Egypt allowed wheat from India for the first time. Uh, how do you see this kind of cooperation going forward in terms of the agriculture aspect of the two countries? I, I would like to put this in a broader context, and that is the, the, the context of food security in general. Because food security is not only about wheat. Of course, wheat is very important for Egypt, and as you rightly uh, said, we, uh, Egypt has approved uh, India as an exporter of wheat uh, to Egypt, unfortunately because of the, 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 the climate uh, change issue and uh, the, tr the drought and uh, the heat wave that uh, hit India this year. India had to ban uh, the export of wheat. This is something that we completely understand, but we hope that this ban is going to be uh, lifted soon so that we can resume our trade relations with India in when it comes to wheat. But also, on the other hand, uh, we, we know that India is uh, in need for uh, fertilizers to guarantee its supply of fertilizers. Egypt is one of the main producers of fertilizers in the region, and there are enormous potentials in this. So the idea of mutual benefit when it comes to food security in general is absolutely there. 
also in terms of market uh, access because there are so many agricultural exports that India can export to Egypt as well as Egypt can export to India. So market access is going to be very important as part of the in general the, the general context of food security mm -hmm. uh, so just one clarification you mentioned about the strategic relationship so will there be elevation in the relationship both countries announcing that they are strategic partners this is something that we're going uh, that, that i hope we're going to announce during this visit and we will let the details to be worked out at a later stage mm -hmm. so my last question to you is uh, egypt you pointed out uh, its strategic location uh, how can Egypt be a country that can be a gateway for India, uh, the Indian investors or the Indian uh, uh, other sectors, people from the other sectors of the Indian society uh, when it comes to Africa and the Arab world, uh, given that Egypt has close relationship both culturally, geographically with the African world and with uh, the Arab world as well? Uh, as I was saying before, Egypt is one of the countries uh, that, 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 that have many free trade agreements with, uh, with other uh, major trade partners. So we have a free trade agreement with the European Union, we have a free trade agreement with uh, the, the Arab world, and we also have a free trade agreement with the whole of Africa, within the, what we call the continental free trade area. This means that by coming to Egypt, India will be able to reach and have access, duty-free access, I have to add, duty-free access to uh, all these markets in the region. This is the one country in which, from which, or through which rather, approximately 200 billion worth of Indian foreign trade passes through in the Suez Canal. So by virtue of its location alone, it is very important for India to secure a place in Egypt. If we add to this the kind of opportunities, free market access that India will have by, by Indian investors can have by uh, locating in Egypt, and we add to this as well the many incentives that we provide uh, foreign investors, especially in uh, the Suez Canal economic zone. We have established this zone uh, a couple of years ago, and in the meantime, it has proven to be a very attractive location for foreign investors. So we are inviting all Indian investors who are really have uh, interest in tapping into the, the markets of the Middle East, of Africa, of uh, the European Union, to come to Egypt, enjoy, enjoy all the incentives, enjoy the duty-free access to these uh, regions, and also enjoy the, the, the strategic location in general. Mm -hmm. uh, so my last question, uh, um, perhaps a certain historical angle to it. Uh, so will we see uh, Egypt and India, uh, President Sisi and Prime Minister Narendra Modi chalk chalking a new path, especially when it comes to global south, something we saw in the past, uh, President Nasser and the Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru doing? I think what we are seeing uh, these days on the international arena is proving that Egypt and India are extremely important players. For example, if we see that Egypt has been invited by India as a member guest, a member country, or a guest country, I'm sorry, in the G20, this proves that these two important developing countries can come together and speak out the voice of the South. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget that India is the biggest uh, developing country or is on its way by the end of this year to be the biggest uh, developing country. Egypt is the biggest country in the region when it also comes to population. And Egypt has traditionally uh, had relations and very extensive cooperation with Africa, with the Arab world and with other parts of the world as well. So just like in the past when both countries together Prime Minister uh, 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 Nehru and President uh, uh, Nasser at that time led the non-aligned movement, I think that Egypt and India can put their hand together and lead the developing countries and bring the voice of the developing countries to the entire world in the G20. Mm -hmm. uh, so my last, my, I have already asked my last question, but since there was a mention of the G20, uh, India is the president of the G20, we've invited Egypt. How do you see this uh, kind of invitation by New Delhi? And also, how do you see in the Indian presidency of the G20? This is a grouping that is shaping the new world order. What I think here is that the invitation of Egypt as a guest country to, to the G20 is uh, very much appreciated from our side, but it's also uh, something that will add uh, value to the work of the G20. Let us not forget that COP27 took place in Egypt. And in COP27, we were discussing climate change, of course, and we were discussing loss and damage. We were discussing many areas that related to climate change and to uh, environmental degradation, including projects. And projects need finance. 
sides. And when the G20 comes together, they will also be discussing the economic situation in the world, including the possibility of uh, uh, making finance available uh, to developing countries in order to achieve development. So it, it seems to me like a natural continuation and a very logical thing to do to invite Egypt as uh, a guest country in the work of the G20. Mm. Well, thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion. It was a pleasure speaking to you on a range of issues, whether it's the bilateral relationship, G20, or the defense partnership. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, Edelta. I really appreciate that. Thank you. So uh, that was the Egyptian ambassador to New Delhi speaking to Vion on a range of subjects. And uh, of course, we know that the Egyptian president will be here in Delhi. This was the first time that Egypt has been invited. And this is the visit uh, that everyone will be closely following and watching. With video journalist Ajit Sidhan Sibal for Vion in New Delhi.